Jared here. It's a very important video. We're going to discuss as much as we can how to prepare for what's coming. Now, we don't know exactly what's coming, when and in what order. We have an idea. It's going to be uh, viruses. Some of them might be real this time. In fact, I'm convinced that some will. Whether it's out of a laboratory, sprayed out of a plane, we don't know. Uh, natural disasters, 100%. Uh, a fake alien invasion at some point, I believe so, and uh, within a few years. There's all kinds of things that they have planned to uh, subdue us and uh, get us to the point where we need them so bad we're willing to put the chip in the hand. How do we prepare? Well, first of all, there's only so much we can do, unless you're a billionaire and uh, you can build your own bunker, unless you have uh, hundreds of acres, thousands of acres of land, um, and, you know, and you can spend all kinds of money to get all kinds of supplies. Most people cannot, okay? Uh, sure, it would be nice to be able to, uh, to have an underground bunker uh, to, uh, that you can keep 10 to 20 people in for up to a year if need be. It would be nice to have boats and uh, sea doos and skidoos and uh, four, uh, you know, all-terrain, four, uh, four-wheel uh, vehicles. Uh, it would be nice to have uh, a well with unlimited water. All these things would be nice. Most people don't have access to that, including me. Now, what can we do? First and foremost, prayer. Everything is in God's hands. Everything is being controlled by God. Prayer is the most important thing that we have. It's the most important tool that we have. Prayer, devotion to God, and an extreme faith in God to the point where you're willing to die for God. Jesus gave the example, his son gave the example of what we need to be willing to go through uh, for God. So prayer, morning, night, many, as many times as you want during the day. Faith in God, okay, that cannot be shattered, that cannot be broken to the point where you're willing to die for God. And devotion and worship to God and of God. That's the first thing. On a practical level, water, stock up on water and get bottles. Um, you know, even if it's not necessarily the best water in the world, you can survive off water. So start stocking up on water, okay? Especially if you don't have a stream nearby. Uh, and even that, they can block streams, okay? Stock up on water, even if it's one or two bottles a week. Same goes for food. I don't have the patience to start canning and with five kids. Uh, it, it's, it's, it's very, very difficult. If you, if you have the time and the patience and the know-how to can food so that it stays uh, and lasts longer, do so. In the meantime, even if you spend an extra 10 or $20 a week just to get canned, canned foods, whether it be uh, some canned meat, canned, especially canned fruits and vegetables, uh, which, which can give you the, uh, the good sugars that you need, uh, can give you uh, some protein, it can give you all kinds of minerals and vitamins, uh, beans, chickpeas, whatever, whatever it is, whatever's on special, peas, carrots, uh, ravioli, it doesn't matter, just so that your body has some nourishment, stock up, and even though it has a, a shelf life, that maybe we're 2024, maybe it's good till 2025, maybe 2026, okay, if something happens, you have some extra food, and if it is running out and you see that within a couple of months the expiration date is gone donate it donate it to a food bank they will use it as long as it's not expired and then just start stocking up again very 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 important like i said if you're able to can do so if you're if you're in a position to grow your own food fantastic even better okay again depending on how big your family is it's not easy not everyone has the land and yes we can do it inside the house uh, we can do it in a little garden. Will it be enough to, uh, to feed a family and to be able to stay fresh? That's another problem. If you can do so, do so, but you should also get, uh, get canned goods uh, that won't expire. And it doesn't even have to be just canned goods. Uh, it can be um, oatmeal, it, it can be pastas. Anything that has a shelf life of one, two or three years uh, that you could either eat as is or cook, you should have some there, uh, at least three, three months worth, okay, if you can do so. Now, this is where I'm going to be careful what I say, and I'm going to be very, very specific so no one can ever use this against me. 
weapons. It's nice to have food, water, supplies for your family, and other things which we'll talk about shortly. But if there's no food on your shelves and supplies are missing, what are you gonna do? How are you gonna protect it? Because you know, people are, are beating each other over toilet paper. Imagine what they're gonna willing to do for food and water. So if they know that you have at your home, you're a target. You're gonna have to protect yourself. So this is where I'm gonna be very specific. If you can legally own weapons, have those weapons. United States is a lot easier than up here in Canada, okay? If you have a license to own weapons, make sure you have some, not with the intent to use it, but God forbid you are in danger and, and people are trying to harm you or your family to get what it is that you have. You have every right legally to defend yourself, okay? Now, if you do not have the ability to legally own weapons, I will never suggest to anybody to go buy illegal weapons, okay? What I will say is that you need to do whatever you need to do to protect yourself and your family. At the same time, people play baseball. I used to play baseball, okay? A lot of kids are into baseball. So when you play baseball, you need baseball bats. So some people have baseball bats in the house. Some people have issues walking, tend to have uh, walking canes. Uh, people have hammers. Uh, people have all kinds of tools that we use to build and, uh, and create things. These things are, you know, lying around the home, in the garage, in the backyard, in the shed, whatever the case may be. Next step, communities. Now, let me be specific about something. Most people that I've ever met who talk about building communities are full of shit. They never take the actual steps because it takes time, it takes money, and it takes commitment. And for a real community of people to be self-sufficient, you need doctors, you need uh, dentists, you need uh, uh, carpenters, you need uh, brick, brick, brick builders, masons, you need uh, people who can cook, people who can grow, people who can build. Uh, mechanics. So you need a big community. It's very, very difficult to put one together. Most people will not put their money where their mouth is. So when I say communities, what I'm really talking about is find like-minded people. And I'm not saying do all move in a community. It, uh, like I said, most people who talk about it, the furthest they'll go is have meetings about it. And that's where it ends. They'll never put anything into, uh, into practice. But knowing people with different gifts, different, uh, different abilities, different hobbies, okay? And being able to count on each other and have a system where if, if shit hits the fan, and it will at some point, everyone can kind of help each other out in some way, shape or form. It never, never hurts. It's a very good thing to, uh, to do, to start reaching out to uh, like-minded people in your area, in and around your area, who think the same way that you do. And it's very easy to find these people online. You go on Facebook, go on Instagram, go on uh, Twitter and see where people are and you can see where they are and, and, and you could reach out and, and, and uh, create groups of, of like-minded people. And uh, you know, the government has no say or can't, can't do anything, you're not breaking any law, you're just finding like-minded people, think like you, and uh, wanna prepare. And uh, you're allowed to do so legally, there's absolutely no issue. So that's what I mean by, uh, by, uh, by community, okay? Emergency items, what do I mean by emergency items? Food and water are good. But in the winter, if electricity shut down, you run out of firewood, how are you gonna keep warm? You need extra blankets, warm boots, extra socks, thick socks, or just socks in general, which are very important, extra shoes in case you need to take off, and hiking boots, sleeping bags, uh, rucksacks, knapsacks, army, bag, ar army bags, whatever you wanna call them, there's different kinds. First aid kits, uh, matches, flares, um, Batteries, okay? Um, these are just different things that, that you should need, that you should have. Just stock up on some of the things that if you said to yourself, okay, if I'm in an emergency for a week and I'm outdoors, what is it that I would need? Maybe some cooking utensils. Whatever it is, start purchasing some stuff that you could always use even when it's not an emergency. Okay, but if you were going camping for a week or a month, 
say to yourself, what would I need if I didn't have access to electricity? What would I need if I didn't have access to heat or water? Okay, whether it's hunting gear, whether it's fishing gear, you should have emergency supplies. It's very, 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 very important. Last, maybe not least, and for most people, they can't afford this. Um, I know I'm not in a position where I can, but at some point, money will be worthless. Okay, at some point, period, everything will be worthless other than the, uh, the card or the chip that they give people, okay? But even when cash is obsolete, and that's what they're trying to do, and eventually they'll succeed, something that will still be worth money will be precious metals. What will be especially important to have if you can afford to purchase some and put aside gold and silver. If you have a supply of that put aside, and again, most people that I know are not in a position uh, where they can afford more than a few, uh, you know, a few hundred bucks, sometimes a few thousand, uh, to be able to purchase some, uh, some gold and, uh, and silver. If you can, do so. Now, if you only have a certain amount of money, which most of us do, and you have to choose between putting some, uh, some food, some water, some emergency supplies uh, on the side, I would choose that route, okay? Rather than the, uh, than the precious metals. But if you can do both, do both. And at the same time, if you have absolutely no means to protect yourself, it will be very easy for someone to come uh, who will have weapons uh, to simply come and take your, uh, your gold and silver. And you're not gonna keep it in a bank because if the bank shut down, you won't have any access to what's, what's in there. So you have to look at your situation and decide what it is that you can do, what it is that you wanna do, and what the priority is. Now, if you do have the means to protect yourself and you have the means to get both the supplies, the food, the water, and the precious metals, I would do so. If you don't have the means, but you can still purchase your supplies as well as precious metals, do so anyways. But your priority would be to stay alive and uh, you need food, water, and emergency supplies to stay alive. This is the best way to prepare. And like I said, step one and the last step, the same way I pray in the morning and I pray at night. It's the first thing I do and it's the last thing I do. Uh, you wanna start your day and finish your day with God and have faith in him and pray. Uh, passionately and sincerely and put your faith in God Almighty and, and worship Him. That is your first line of defense and it's your last line of defense. That's number one. May God bless us that He sends the Messiah without us having to need these things. Uh, but um, if we're not so lucky, if we're not so blessed rather, it's good to be ready. God bless you all and Godspeed. Jared. Thank mm -hmm. you.